Hiya. What's up? It's been a whole year yeah. since we talked. We talked December of last year. Yeah. And so much has happened. Yeah. So we have so much to recap Catch on. Up, uh, yeah. You did a playoff run, mm -hmm. free agency. Yeah. You're back here almost it's over halfway. Yeah. Season's yeah. over halfway. Oh my gosh. Okay. Crazy. Let's get to it. You scared everyone for a little bit in your exit interview. Um, and I don't think anyone blamed you at the yeah. time, but they had asked, like, is your goal to be a starting point guard in the yeah. NBA? I don't know who would say no. Right. But then you signed with us. Yeah. Why? Um, just comfortable here. Um, obviously, yeah, the, the goal at the, the exit interview wasn't to, to scare anybody or anything like that. But um, I was just being honest, just being real. And that's all that's all I could do at that at that time. And um, that's all I could do throughout free agency. But um, ultimately, just um, was able to get to a place where I was comfortable, obviously, uh, with the contract situation. But um, I knew I knew what we had here. I knew um, what the goal is here, and uh, ultimately, that's why you play is to try to compete and win championships. And so I knew um, that we had the the team to do so here, and I wanted to be a part of that. And uh, just the guys, the relationship I got with Coach, uh, with Zach, you know, I wasn't wasn't ready to leave. And so uh, just made it made it work, and I'm, I'm glad to be back and excited for uh, another playoff run. Well, we're obviously glad to have you back as well. We're halfway through and everyone right. loves you. Yeah. Why is it about this team? When you're like, I know we have the pieces, I know we have the guys, we're going to make a championship run. Yeah. What is it? It's uh, it's just the bond we got. People talk so much about the chemistry of this team and just like the vibes are always good. We have fun and that's that's unique. That's not something that's normal in this league. And uh, you got to cherish that, but also take advantage of that because you, you don't always get, you know, get those locker rooms where everyone gets along both on and off the court. And that makes a huge difference when you're trying to win, you know, and compete for championships. It's uh, guys got to be on the same page. Guys got to be able to have tough combos with each other and not take it personal. Guys got to get along and put egos aside. And uh, we got that with this group. And so that's something that was, you know, super important to me, you know, when deciding to come back for sure. Do you think guys who have only played at Memphis, which is a lot of guys actually on this team right yeah. now, like understand that that's different? Because I had conversations like a long time ago with like the Solomon Hills, the Jay Carter's, the mm -hmm. guys who like came in and who were vets saying yeah. that this was different. But like I've never been with a different team. Yeah. So like this is what I think teams are like. You've right. been with different teams, but there's a whole lot of guys who haven't. Yeah. Do they understand that this is like um, not the normal? I don't know if they fully understand just because, again, that's all, that's all you know. But guys like myself or like, um, you know, like a Kyle Anderson who mm -hmm. was here before, last year and some other vets who are now coming in. Um, you know, we try to, to preach that, <laughs> like, look, this isn't how it is everywhere. So take advantage of it and cherish it and let's uh, make the most of it because you never have the same group um, one through 18 or whatever it may be. And you definitely don't have the chemistry and like the um, the togetherness that we have, you know, this is this is unique at this level just because there's so much that goes into an NBA organization. Um, so, yeah, we, we try to preach it, but I don't think guys fully fully grasp it until they go elsewhere um, and are really have to face, you know, being in a different locker room and, and seeing like the different side of things. And that's when I think it kind of settles in for some people. But, you know, until then, you know, we just keep it going here. Yeah, uh, I want to talk to you about something that is I mean, I guess it's a debate. I don't really see the other side of it. But online, everyone's like, Tyus Jones, best backup point guard in the NBA. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen the tweets. It's like by national media members. It's everywhere. What, yeah. Does that give you some sort of joy? Or is it still like, I'm just doing uh, my job? I mean, it's, it's cool. Um, obviously, it's uh, appreciated. Um, but I've said it before, and I'll continue to say, like, I don't look at myself as a backup. So like, if I have that crown, Kind of and Josh said that too on Twitter. It is. Yeah. He's like, it's not one and two, it's yeah. one A and one B. So it's just like, I appreciate it, but um, yeah, I don't look at myself as a backup anyway. So um, yeah, I don't read too much into it. It's cool and I appreciate the, <laughs> the props, but again, I'll, I'll view myself as a starter um, in this league. That's just not my role on this team and I'm, and I'm fine with that. You have started seven games like so far this season and guys were recording this and the numbers were yeah. insane. Yeah. Is there a difference in Maybe not mentality because you've just explained your mentality, but like the obviously your role increases and so yeah. so does your productivity. Like the yeah. numbers are wild. It's uh, I mean obviously Ja does like a lot for us. Mm -hmm. um, he has a lot of uh, a lot on his plate. Um, he does just so much for us, and he's you know more than capable of doing that. Um, but when he's out, someone has to pick up that slack, and uh, so my role increases. I don't I don't try to be Ja. I don't try to. Uh, put up the same numbers as him or anything like that, but um, I do have more opportunity and 
there are shots to be taken and, and plays to be made where um, he would normally be, you know, filling in there. So, um, so it's just it's a just, bigger hole. It's just a bigger, exactly, just bigger opportunity that I'm just trying to, to take advantage of. And um, someone has to do it uh, when he's out. So uh, just try to take advantage of it. Well, here we are. Exactly. Another debate online. <clears throat> and it is like one of those things that goes all year long and people always put their opinions in whatever is the best bench duo. Yeah. Your name has been in there with Brandon Clark. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. What? Why do you guys work so well together? Because um, he's another guy who like, yeah. he's not really a, like a backup uh, anything. Nah, uh -uh. He's, he's another guy, yeah, <laughs> another starter. That's just his role on this team mm -hmm. is, you know, he's a, a backup to Steve-O who's, you know, he lead in this league. And, um, but you know, me and, me and BC just got a good chemistry on the court. That's grown uh, over the last three, four years here. Um, just so many pick and rolls throughout the season, um, just kind of figuring each other out. Um, a lot of film work, a lot of games, just a lot of reps, and we just uh, continue to build our chemistry. Uh, he plays extremely well um, in the pocket. Uh, I like to play out of the pick and roll, so it's just kind of a match that you know goes together, and we've just continue to focus on on that chemistry because we know we have a big role for this team uh, off the bench, and yeah, we're just kind of just keeping it. Keeping was it, it you that? people used to tease about not being good at throwing lobs? Or is that someone else? Am I making that up? Uh, there was someone. No, nah, it wasn't me. No, you're like, no, I'm It wasn't me, lobs. but yeah. BC always wants more lobs, <laughs> though. That's a that's a that's a joke we got, but no, I don't think it was I don't think it was me. Hmm. Hmm. It's been four years, what yeah, do I know? Yeah. Um, okay. If you had to take you and BC out of it, take the Grizzlies out of it, yeah. is there bench duos that like come to mind when you think of that debate? Uh, like in the league right now. Yeah. Uh, Damn, you want to go historically? You can talk. I mean, the if you're looking like historically, yeah, you you got like, I mean, you know, like you got like the Spurs bench bench units, um, bench duos though. Nah, I don't I don't know. Like off the bench. I know I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, completely. no, I don't I don't know. I'm taking me and BC uh, over, over any <laughs> over any bench duo out there. Uh, okay. I know this is something that you don't like to talk about, and we're not going to dive into assist to turnover ratio. Yeah. It's just like another thing where it's like, holy crap, four straight years. That's yeah. fine. But Tyus, yeah. there is a stat that I didn't even know existed that you're about to shatter. What's that? I'm sure you've seen this, maybe. Um, OK, you're currently on pace to absolutely crush the all time single season record for steals per foul. Have you heard of this? No, I haven't. OK, so since 1973. Knock on wood, somebody knock on wood. Yeah, can someone? Knock on wood. Appreciate Thank you. It. Since 1973, there's been three times that an NBA player ever has had the ratio over two. Okay. It was Don Buse back in the 70s. Yeah. He had 2.1. Okay. In 2021, it was you, 2.06. In 2020, it was you who had 2.06. Okay. Right now, you're at 2.24. Okay. So we're doing pretty what good. What is it? Like, what the hell? Yeah. I haven't heard I haven't heard that stat. That's a good one, though. Right? That's a good one, though. Let's... Uh... I'm gonna make sure I tell coach uh, <laughs> next time I see him. But no, I think that's just, uh, yeah, no, that's a cool stat. I haven't heard that one. So, uh, but yeah, it's just reading passing lanes, just being a student of the game, knowing knowing our scheme on defense. We got shot blockers behind me. That makes mm -hmm. it easier to kind of probably gamble a little bit too much um, out up front, but, and then just studying, studying film, knowing opponents' uh, go-tos, knowing their plays, things like that, but yeah, it's kind of a little bit of everything. But that's what I was going to ask you, because we talk so much about your offense. Yeah. Everyone is always like, assist to turnover, assist to turnover. Yeah. And offense is like the like sexier thing that everyone sure. wants to talk about. For sure. But a defensive stat like this, that only three times has it been done, and yeah. you're two of them, and you're about to break yeah. it again. That's pretty cool. What does it say about either like the system, mm -hmm. or is it just you, or is it the guys that you're playing with? I think, again, I think it's a little bit of everything. I think it's just kind of the right, right combo. I think the system kind of allows you to highlight what you're good at on both sides of the ball, no matter who you are. It's the guys around me. Like I said, we got Jaron, BC, Steven, uh, protecting the rim behind me. So they just make kinda, it easier to gamble. Yeah, exactly. Makes it easier to be more aggressive on ball, reading passing lanes, things like that. Uh, also coach just kind of giving you that freedom to, if you, if you feel like you can make a play, go make a play. There's probably times where he's, you know, on me about, you know, trying to gamble a little too much or just staying solid. But then, um, like the fouling part is just showing hands, not um, just trying to be disciplined, trying to be disciplined, knowing we got the shot blockers behind me, knowing a lot of times guys nowadays are looking for fouls just as much as they are trying to actually make the shot. So mm -hmm. just kind of playing that game, a uh, game within a game and 
but yeah, it's kind of a cool stat. So we're gonna. Shout out whoever. Necessarily <laughs> gonna be labeled a, a defender, but that's a that's a cool defensive stat that uh, I definitely take pride in. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear yeah. it. The Grizzlies defense, as a whole, is like skyrocketed yeah. since Jaron got back into the lineup. Yeah. You're talking about how these different pieces kind of like help make this defense good. You've got those guys in the back. You've got you guys up front. You leading this steals to fouls yeah. ratio. <laughs> like, how much is just like defense? part of the Grizzlies identity this year because again yeah. we talk about offense we talk about dunks and we talk about the three points and we talk about you guys getting downhill but defense is like everything yeah it's 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 become our identity it's become what we hang our hat on night in and night out beginning of the year we were struggling defensively from the outside looking in it was probably like what's going on but in the locker room we knew like Jaren's not playing and he's a huge part of mm -hmm. our defensive success um, but that wasn't really an excuse because you never know what can happen. You got to be able to play when guys aren't on the floor, um, if he's in foul trouble, things like that. You can't just put all the weight on, on one person. Um, but with, when Jaron came back, obviously everyone sees he's the, I mean, best defensive player in the league. So he changes. What were the conversations before he came back? I mean, what's what's working, what's not working? Um, different um, schemes. Are we trying to? Should we be trying different things? Um, are we sticking with what we're doing? Um, and then also knowing when we you add Jaron and that's like five blocks a game and that's five blocks plus how many times are guys going in there alter he's altering shots mm -hmm. not getting the block but changing um, their shots or changing you know the opponent's offensive you know thinking and so when he came back it just changed changed the course of of everything for us on defense and then we continue to just buy in buy in on that knowing that you're not always going to make shots every night, but on defense, if you can make it a long night for your opponents, you're, you're giving yourselves a better chance than rather than just trying to outscore, you know, your opponent every single night. So it's just become kind of us. I haven't looked recently, and I maybe I should have before we chatted, but yeah. it just popped into my head. There, that home stretch that you had, however many games it was where we were like at home during yeah. that 11 game win streak, I was looking at the percentage that your team held the other team, like in terms of field goal. Mm -hmm. And it was, I would look and it would be like, whatever. 38% and right. I would look at the whole team and it would be like the lowest they had out of yeah. the entire season and yeah. that was like consistent throughout like four or five games throughout that entire stretch. Yeah. That's hella impressive. It is. It is. Yeah. And it's just like, well, once you, once you have that little bit of success, it's motivating and it, you know, we want to continue to, you know, string those games along and continue to improve on that, on that side of the ball. And we saw what was working and, you know, and that's defense when we're locked in on the defensive end, we're giving ourselves the best chance to win. And it's also cool to, you know, to be able to hang your hat on like being the number one defense in the league. And we want to, you know, we want to continue that. What is it about playing at home specifically that has just been like yeah. uh, a major difference? This I think year? it's I think it's the energy in the building. It's a, the crowd, uh, our fans get us going. It's um, obviously we're comfortable with it. But yeah, we just continue to build off of last year, kind of that momentum. I think our, our playoff games like that was the most electric time. <laughs> obviously um, in the forum and it's just carried over into this year and our fans have been great they've been kind of carrying us at home and uh, we're trying to put on a show for them each and each and every night and we just got to translate that that same kind of energy on the road uh, when our when our home fans aren't with us i know you have friends on other teams brother on other yeah, team yeah. is it like do other teams know that or is it just like another road game for them or is this like becoming when they're coming something? to memphis yeah. yeah they they know it they know it um Memphis is just like huge for the culture. Um, and the cool thing about the Grizzlies is we embrace the, we embrace that. We embrace the city. We embrace the culture. Um, you can hear it in like the music we play um, pregame during the game. You can hear it in like the fans like they're talking trash, you know, to the other team. And it's just like we've embraced the culture 100 percent all the way around, no matter how you look at it. And teams teams know that and they can feel that when they come in here. And it's like the energy is through the roof, the energy of the teams through the roof, the, the crowds through the roof. So it's just uh, people people are starting to, you know, become more aware when, when they're coming to Memphis that uh, it's not going to be an easy night. Talking about embracing that culture and the music and the pregame, you're a frontliner of that pregame yeah. that's like low-key gone viral. Yeah. When did that start? It started last year, uh, just playing music, kind of dancing, trying to get loose uh, just before the game. Um, again, we got a close team, so uh, we're just in there vibing. but. This year it became kind of like a, like a line, like a, <laughs> not a step line, but we kind of like four, have a formation and 
we play our little songs and it caught on, went viral, but that's just us. Like, that's just us. We have fun, we enjoy it. Um, we got the best jobs in the world and uh, we try to make the most of it each, each and every night. And we know we're at our best when we're loose and having fun and just kind of um, enjoying it. Has it become a superstition at this point? Like, do you guys do the same thing all the time? Different songs, different whatever? We, uh, like... yeah, so we play music. It's a superstition for sure. It is. Um, we have, yeah, we got to do it. Otherwise, it'll, it'll be, it'll be, I don't even know what, what'll happen that night. Just but don't. Yeah, do yeah. We're not going to cross that, that bridge, but we play, uh, we play different music up until that last, we play the same song when we kind of get in that formation. I don't know what the song is because they have to block it out on yeah, social media because of. It's kind of like the, the great mystery. Everyone's always wondering what song we're, we're dancing to. Have so. you seen the videos where people put like ridiculous put, songs yeah, to it? It's, it's funny. funny. It is funny. But um, yeah, we mix up the music until that, that last song, we got our, our go-to song, and that's that's a different song this year. It'll be a different song next year, but uh, yeah, it's just kind of our thing. Well, it's it's fun to yeah, watch. it's cool. I mean, I've never like watched it, but it's fun to see yeah. online. Um, my very last thing is Taylor Jenkins talks a lot about you and Jaw mm -hmm. as like a unit. Yeah. And he says that you specifically play different roles. This is his word, fantastically, which yeah. I love that word. <laughs> um, he said that you uh, lead the team and play professionalism and consistency and describes you and Jaw as the engines of the team. Yeah. I just want you to talk a little bit about your relationship with Jaw, yeah. like on the court, whether mm -hmm. you guys are playing one, two, or yeah. you're playing one A and one B. Yeah. Uh, me and Jaw got a great relationship. Um, I know you said on, on the court, but off the court as well. Um, again, it translates. Since the moment I got here, he was extremely open with me. You guys come at the same time? We did, okay. we did. And that was part of the reason uh, for me coming here was to kind of help um, try to help his, you know, learning curve. Um, not that he even needed it. Uh, fast you never forward, know. Whenever fast he's forwarding, happening. but um, and he was open to that. He was open to um, just that relationship, just that uh, piggybacking off one another, um, having that open dialogue, just talking the game out, talking the game through. Something that both of us, you know, we pride ourselves on is, is having a, a high basketball IQ, thinking the game trying to be a couple plays ahead of, you know, our opponents, being an extension of coach on the court. You know, we're just always continuing to talk. We're watching film. Um, so our relationship just over the past few years has just continued to grow, you know, continue to get closer. And yeah, we just build off of that. We know as point guards on, on any team, the point guard, you know, has a lot of responsibility um, on this team, you know, especially though, you know, how the system is. Um, like I said earlier, Jock creates so much. He has so much on his plate. Um, that he has to do night in and night out for us. And um, for me as a point guard, I also try to, you know, help in that way. And so, yeah, our relationship is just great. Just continue to, to talk. We're, we're trying to accomplish something great here. And we know in order to do that, we got to be at our best um, as the point guards and as the leaders of this team. And like Coach says, as the engine. So we're just trying to continue to get better, continue to grow. And, uh, you know, we want to see each other at, at their best. You mentioned that like part of why you came, I guess, three and a half years ago, yeah. four seasons ago, was to help him in his le learning curve. Yeah. And obviously you did a good job. Mm -hmm. Has he has he helped expand anything in your game? Like you've been For in the sure. league so much longer than him. For sure. No, he definitely has. Um, and that's, you know, just a part of our relationship, like a part of figuring out the system, a part of just being more familiar with everything, being you know comfortable with the system, with coach, just kind of just talking, you know, through the game with one another, night in and night out, what we see. Um, there's nights where I might not, might not be doing something or might be doing too much of, you know, something else. And, you know, you, everyone's human, you, you might not realize it. And he has no problem telling me, hey, you gotta look for this, or you're trying to do this too much, or, you know what I mean? And vice versa. He has no problem if I go to him, like, hey, you're- um, See, that's the biggest part of teamwork need, that like, exactly. I feel like people don't understand. Yeah, people don't understand that. Um, like you're not getting offended. You're not getting offended, and that's a part of the relationship that, mm -hmm. that we have. And um, it's never personal. It's it's always to better the individual, but also to better the team. Like if, if I see he's doing something or needs to look for something, I have no problem telling him that. And he wants me to tell him that and vice versa. Like if I'm, if I'm out there messing up or doing something I shouldn't be or passing up shots. He has no problem coming to me and say, hey, be aggressive, look for this, look for that. Um, so he's definitely helped me continue to try to get better, um, continue to improve my game in all areas. And, you know, we, you know, don't see that stopping anytime soon. Yeah, best point guards in the league. Yes, sir. I like it. Exactly. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it.